Is it a trunk or an access port? Normally, when using IP phones, we cable the switch to the phone and then the phone to a PC on the desk. But the config is going to make you think, well, it's uncertain whether that's an access port or a trunk port. And this video will explore all of that. Well, let's jump in. My videos here at the channel match the organization of the books. In the book, there's a section on VLAN and VLAN trunking, configuration and verification. And I broke that down into four separate videos here at the YouTube channel. We're on the third one that I've labeled 2C in order. And it says trunks to IP phones. And you might think, oh, that gives away. It must be a trunk. Well, I just use that as a label, but it's pretty short and sweet. It's the shortest of these four videos in this sequence, and we'll talk about how to configure it, and then we'll talk about how to verify it, and the verification is the part that really can be confusing about, is it a trunk or is it an access port? As always, stay to the end, and I'll give you some study group comments, like my advice on where to focus on this topic after this video. I'll give you some review and revision tips for what you can do from here at the channel and also what you can do from the books. All right, let's go. Let's start by talking about these voice ports, but let's compare them to ports with just one endpoint, like a PC. So the big blue rectangle represents a switch. It's just spread out to make it more visible. We've got six ports listed up there at the top, and each of them are connected to a PC. All right, typical. And then if you think about the config, let's just say we wanted all six of those PCs in the same VLAN, VLAN 101. So we create the VLAN, and then with interface subcommands, the first command here, switch port mode access, says be an access port. And the second command says when an access port this interface is in VLAN 101, so that's the config for port 1, and we'd have the same equivalent config for the rest of the ports there. So that's a typical access port configuration. Now let's talk about the cabling for a moment here. We've got the switch, and you've got a long cable run from the switch in the wiring closet all the way out to the cubicle or the desktop where you've got this wall plate. That's where that cabling stops. Then you've got a short patch cable that connects from the wall plate out to the PC, you know, maybe a meter or two long, that kind of thing. So that's where the cabling runs. Now, when you've got an IP phone, here's what you do. You've got that same wall plate in the same cubicle or office, but you cable the cable, the short patch cable in the cubicle to the phone. The phone actually has a two port switch underneath it in the bottom of the device and you plug in to one port in the switch and then you take another patch cable and plug it into a PC. So now you've got two devices connected to the same switch port and it takes a little more thought about what you configure here. Now by the way I've never really defined what an IP phone is yet so it's a phone device and it's created so that it connects to Ethernet and uses IP packets to send and receive the data that comprises the voice. So you use it like a telephone but it uses TCP IP. All right, so the configuration for this thing, you might think, all right, well, maybe we configure it just like we do with PCs. It, it's a data device in that it sends IP packets. Well, that is an option. You could configure just like we saw that earlier sample with an access port. We create the VLAN. We get into each interface, tell it be an access port and be in VLAN 101, and you're done. Just turns out that's not the recommended configuration. Instead, there's a big config concept that separates the PCs from the phones, all right? And if you hear separate, you want to think VLANs. So by design, what Cisco recommends is that the PCs be in one VLAN, say VLAN 101, and the phones be in a second VLAN. And I've built this concept diagram just to show them separated. I'm not suggesting we recable what I just talked about. They're still sharing a cable, each phone and PC. But we want the phones to be in a separate VLAN, like VLAN 102. All right, so for the data VLAN, traditional devices, 101, they're all going to be in one subnet, call it subnet A for the sake of discussion. And when we configure the port to signify that, it's the traditional command switch port access VLAN 101. But for the voice VLAN, we configure it with switch port voice VLAN 102. So the voice is the different keyword there that says, hey, not only is this a second VLAN, it's the voice VLAN, if you will. So here's what the config looks like if you put it all together. For those six ports on the left, we create two VLANs now, and we configure those same first three commands as before, but we add this switch port voice VLAN 102 command on the port as well. 
Before we talk about verification commands, let's talk about what happens behind the scenes for a moment. And to that end, I've kind of flipped the figure on its side with a switch on the left, then the phone, and then the PC. And the switch is logic with these two VLANs, one being designated as a voice VLAN. It uses some trunking features. All right, so here is, is its logic up here in this thought bubble. A frame that's destined for the PC, like a frame in the data VLAN, it's going to forward it just like it would for any other access port. It sends the frame with no 802.1Q tag, right? That, that wouldn't make sense on an access port, right? But frame sent to the phone, it adds an 802.1Q tag for it and puts VLAN 102 as the VLAN ID in that tag. And the logic then at the phone, who has an embedded switch, is this. If the frame arrives untagged, forward it to the PC, but if it arrives tagged with VLAN 102, clearly it's meant for me and process the frame, all right? So it's that kind of logic. So here's a frame that's in VLAN 101, so it's untagged, gets to the phone, and the phone forwards down to the PC. Next one is a voice packet, so it's got an 802.1Q header added by the switch. It arrives down at the phone, and the phone stops it, processes it, and uses it, all right? So that's what's going on behind the scenes. But it's really the show commands that reveal this whole, is it access port or is it a trunk port? So for the rest of the video, I'm going to focus on verification and we'll think about whether this port looks more like an access port or a trunk port. Here's one more look at the config with the access VLAN 101 and voice VLAN 102. Let's take a look at some show commands. So show VLAN brief. It shows VLAN 101 with those six ports that we've been showing in our examples, one through six. And then it shows VLAN 102 with the same six ports in it. Interesting. So as a review, show VLAN brief normally shows access ports only. And it shows the ports in their respective access VLANs. When all we thought about were data VLANs with the switch port access VLAN whatever command, these ports would show up in one and only one VLAN because they'd be assigned to one and only one VLAN. Here, it's kind of weird because the ports are showing up in two VLANs, the data VLAN and the voice VLAN. So that's a little bit weird in this whole, is it an access port or a trunk port? But you see them there. How about the show interfaces trunk command? This command, without an interface ID listed out here, only shows operational trunks, and it shows nothing. So that would say to me, well, iOS's conventions, hey, it's not a trunk. These six ports are not operating as trunks, all right? So maybe it's not a trunk. But show interfaces, and if you give it an interface ID with the keyword trunk, that command forces output, and it tells you about the trunking status. And notice what it says about this gig 101 interface that we've configured as a voice port. It says it's not trunking, all right? So that tells me that iOS thinks the port is not a trunk from an official standpoint, or at least that's where it's leaning. But it also tells me VLANs allowed on the trunk, there's two of them, 101 through 102. Again, multiple VLANs makes us think that it's got some trunking-like features. So short version there is that it's, it's got some trunking features, but it's probably not a trunk. Now, the best command to really see what's going on for trunking is the show interfaces command with the interface ID with the switch port keyword because it says things like your operational mode. Well, here it's telling us the operational mode is access. So there's a confirmation that it thinks, hey, this is an access port, but it does tell us both the access mode VLAN, the data VLAN, and the voice VLAN that we would know from the configuration. So Point is, there's a lot of mixed messages in the show command output, and you should review these and become comfortable with what it's going to look like in this case of having a data and voice VLAN. So just to wrap up, I call these things pseudo trunks. Cisco does it, but I do because they're kind of like trunks and kind of not. So the trunking features, it uses 802.1Q behind the scenes. It's two, VLAN, uh, two VLANs only, so not lots of VLANs, just those two. iOS does not include other VLANs on those links automatically. And the config is mostly like an access port just with that one additional VLAN added. So what can you and should you do from here? Well, just to recap a little bit about this topic, the configuration looks like an access port, but with one additional command that adds one additional VLAN, the voice VLAN, to the configuration. 
The hardest part is getting used to the show commands because they give you output that's a little different. You know, it has some implications of there's a trunk, but some implications that there's an access port with two VLANs in it. It is still worth reading this book section. There's a lot to it, but I've got four smaller videos for everything in that book section. So this is the third one. Get through the fourth one and then maybe use the book section. As far as review, I don't have anything for you here at the channel, but there is something at my blog site. So if you go to my blog, there's a link down in the um, description to this video. You'll get to a lab that's about data and voice VLANs, and it's got a topology like you see there, and it's got four cases of a phone and a PC, and you can configure like you saw just now, and you can do some show commands to see that. Interestingly enough, in that lab, there's a an extra packet tracer file you can download in the verification section. And that one's got a pre-configured call manager express that would let you actually simulate picking up the handset on the phone and making a phone call and seeing the phone call work if you want to play around with that. But, you know, more directly, you want to get used to the show commands and the configuration from the command line interface on these switches, all right? And then again, just check out the book, that book section, once you get finished with all these videos related to configuring and verifying VLANs and VLAN trunks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're ready for the next one, click on the left and you'll move on to the video about VLAN trunking protocol or VTP. On the right, it's a link to one of those earlier labs, the one about access ports to get that down before you then think about configuring voice ports. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.